When it comes to rendering components in Next.js, it supports a number of options and our objective in this lesson is to give you a simple mental model to distinguish between the options and to give you the simplest piece of code that actually demonstrates this difference. So let's go. Here we have a blank Next.js project and you are free to bring in any Next.js project that you might have. The first thing that we will demo is static site generation. So we create a new file called ssg.tsx and within this file, we have a basic Next.js component and all that we are doing over here is rendering a simple div that contains some portion of text that is loaded from a JavaScript variable. Now there is no dynamic loading of data within this particular component. Pages like this can be statically generated by Next.js and form the category static site generation. What this means is that when we visit this page within the browser, Next.js will return the same completely rendered HTML every single time. You can see that within the HTML, we have the complete text already rendered and we can verify that from the preview tab as well. Now, sometimes you don't have the data at hand. For example, let's take our person variable and move this into an API endpoint that will be returning the person string. We don't need anything complicated. We will return the same person object every single time. The objective here is to simply demonstrate some dynamic query of data. Now with an API in place, we have a few different options of loading this particular person's string. The simplest option is to continue to create React code the way you've always done it. We have the same component that we had within our static site generation, but this time we replace our person string with the use state variable and then utilize the use effect hook to load this particular person string from our API. Now here's what will happen when the user requests this page. Next.js will call this component and it will render a string containing hello with an empty string, which is the initial value of the use state for this particular person. Once the page gets hydrated by React within the browser, this particular use effect hook will run, it will load the data and then trigger a re-render with the actual person string by calling set person. And we can verify that when we visit this page within the browser. If you look at the initial request that is returned for this particular page, the HTML contains simply hey space rows. And we can see that within the preview tab as well. The name of the person is not present and only once the API request is made to the person API, does it actually get populated within the final rendering that we are seeing on the screen. Now client side re-rendering is the simplest solution that we have in terms of rendering dynamic data within the UI. And this is what you would probably be using if you are not using something like Next.js. Now, even though this is the simplest thing that you can do, the fundamental issue with this particular approach is that when this page is queried by a search engine, it will actually not see the string that we are dynamically loading. So if you want the best experience for SEO ranking, we need to do some form of server side rendering of dynamic data. And this brings us to the next form of rendering, which is SSR or complete server side rendering. Now with server side rendering, instead of having the data loaded within the component, our component will take that data as a prop. So here we are taking a prop person string and that is what we will be rendering. Now, of course, this prop needs to get loaded by something and we will be doing that using this function called get server side props. We create a local function that we will export from this particular page called get server side props and this will do all of the data loading for us. It will make the API request to the person URL, will get the person from the response and return that as a part of a props object. Now here's how the execution will look at runtime. The user will request this page. Next.js will notice that this page exposed this function called get server side props, will invoke this function and take the props from the returned object and then finally render the SSR component with these particular props. This means that the SSR component can return the completely rendered HTML and we can verify that when we visit the browser. Within the network tools for this particular page, the HTML contains everything that we are seeing on screen. And we can even see that when we visit the preview tab. Now SSR is great for SEO, but there is one minor drawback. Every time anyone requests this particular page, the server has to go out and make an additional API request to get the data. This means more work for your server and potentially some cost with third party APIs as well. Now, if you have a data source that doesn't need to be completely up to date every single time a user requests it, for example, the number of likes on a particular tweet, you can use this thing called incremental static regeneration. Fundamentally, it is the same as complete server side rendering, just with caching thrown in. So our incremental static regeneration component would look exactly the same as the SSR component, 
but this time instead of bringing in get server side props we bring in get static props and instead of exporting a function called get server side props we will export this function called get static props within the function the code will be exactly the same to begin with that is it will make an api request to the person endpoint get the person and return that as a part of a props object but the key difference over here is that we get this opportunity to return a revalidate number this represents the number of seconds that this particular response will be cached for so now when the user requests this isr page nextjs will notice that it has a function get static props we'll call that we'll get the props and render the isr component with these props but then when someone else requests the same page within a 10 second window nextjs will not call get static props and simply return the same html that was returned for the previous response now as far as the user behavior is concerned they will see the same page that they saw with ssr that is the data is completely rendered within the html response that is returned from the server so going back to our examples here are my final thoughts if you don't need to load any data don't have to worry it's going to be statically generated by nextjs if you are going to be making queries you can do the simple react way which is use effect the only issue is that this will not be the ideal scenario for seo so if you want seo jump into isr cuz this gives you the same benefits of ssr but with an opportunity to do some performance optimization by using simple caching and finally if you want the most up to date data being rendered by the server have a crack at ssr and that's all for this lesson smash that i can subscribe for more to the point content like this for example here's a lesson where we will look at server side rendering of emotion css within nextjs thanks for joining me and i will see you in the next one